What is going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making a Daphnia culture. Uh, we just went out and picked up a, a starter Daphnia culture from a local hobbyist and actually gave us a really large amount as well as some floating plants. I don't know if you can see it very well on the camera. I might have to zoom in a little bit later. But anyways, we have some live Daphnia here and we want to culture them, kind of reproduce them and then use them as a live food source uh, here in the fish room because live Daphnia is an incredible live food to give to your fish. It has a lot of protein, it has a lot of fat, really good for babies. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and see how we culture a bare basic Daphnia culture as well as what to feed them and what their requirements are. So let's jump into it. So all you are going to need is a small tank. Originally I had a five gallon tank here, but it's always harder to maintain water parameters in a smaller body of water. So instead I put a 20 gallon tank here. Um, the lid's not really on, it's just to prevent it from you know bubbling over. I have two airline drops in the back there, one here and one there. You only need one and that's really just to keep the water um, agitated at the surface there, just so it doesn't get that murky film layer because Daphne can't really eat or surface very well if that murky layer is there. Uh, you don't want to use an air stone because an air stone makes the air bubbles a little bit smaller than if you just have the air running straight out of the hose. And you don't want small air bubbles because small air bubbles can get under the shells of the Daphnia and make them water buoyant or air buoyant, whatever you want to call it, essentially making it to where they can't swim properly and then they will eventually die. So you want to have larger air bubbles coming in and you want just enough to agitate the surface and that's it. Uh, the only other thing you're going to need is of course the Daphnia culture itself and a cycled tank. I have one piece of plant in there because why not? I love plants. See if it grows. Uh, a little bit of a test but you don't need it and it doesn't need any substrate. doesn't need anything fancy. It doesn't even need a light. Daphnia do not like uh, direct light on them so I'm just going to use the ambient light here in the room and that's going to be good enough for them. So all we're going to do is we are going to open up this Daphnia container uh, sort through it a little bit, um, maybe clean it up a little bit, and we're just basically going to add it into the tank. The tank's already cycled, the tank's already good. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and start our culture. Easy as that. Okay, so the guy I got the Daphnia from, uh, he had an outside pond. So this is all mosquito larvae. So I just got done fishing out all the mosquito larvae. And this is what's left. It even comes with a couple floating plants, which is pretty cool. So literally all we're going to do is just add the Daphnia to the tank. As long as it's a cycled tank, it really doesn't need a whole lot going on with it. It just needs that little bit of air. It doesn't need a lot of light. It doesn't want a heater. Daphnia actually like really cold temperatures. So as long as you just have basic ambient room temperature, a lot of people will say if you have like a basement or a cement floor, kind of like this, any room that has a lot of uh, cold air, a Daphnia tank is going to do just fine. Usually like 65, 70 degrees. Perfect. So let's go ahead and dump our Daphnia in. So now you're probably wondering, well, what do you feed the Daphnia in order to keep them alive and reproducing? And the answer to that is also a very simple one. Uh, Daphnia are filter feeders, meaning they'll take out any little baby particles they can find in the water column as they swim around. So the easiest thing to do would be if you are in a area with a lot of sun and you can produce green water, green water is a great food source for Daphnia. They will filter feed that and you probably only need to feed them some green water once every couple days. But if you don't live in an area with a lot of sun and can make green water easily, all you're gonna need is just a little bit of water. I like to pour it into a cup personally. And then you're going to want some active dry yeast. Uh, yes, this is the same stuff you make bread out of. All you're going to wanna do is take a little bit of that active dry yeast and add it to that water that we just put into that cup. 
I like to use about two tablespoons worth. It really doesn't matter how much yeast you use versus how much water you use, because all you're doing is making a concentrate right now. You're just going to add it to the water later. So I like to use about two tablespoons and enough water to fill out, uh, fill up about half of this water bottle. You can make this fresh every single day. That's a lot of work. So what I like to do is I like to get a little baby bottle and I like to fill it up about halfway because this stuff, once you mix it together, it is going to go bad after a couple weeks. It'll start to ferment. Um, so I don't like to make a whole lot at a time, but I like to make about half of a bottle, maybe a little, uh, two thirds of a bottle just to always have some on hand and in the fridge. So once you have your yeast and water together, some people say you can you can kind of give it a stir and then let it sit for a couple hours and stuff and it'll be fine. But really what you're looking for is you're looking to make it into a slurry. So in order to expedite that process, I have a little hand blender thing right here. I just like to insert it into the cup, turn it on low, and just give it a couple pulses. And just kind of go up and down a little bit and make sure you get all of that yeast and you cut it all up. And that is it. So now instead of a bunch of yeast, now we have this Real nice thick slurry with a, a little bit of bubbling in it, but that's fine. And all we're going to do is we're going to add it to our little bottle to make it easily accessible. And then we'll be right back. So we're literally just pouring it in the bottle. Super, super easy. Here we're back. All right, so we have our yeast slurry. And again, it doesn't really matter the ratio of water to yeast because all you're doing is you're making a concentrate right here. And then you're just gonna pour a couple drops into your daphnia tank. So because I don't have a lot of flow in the tank, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple drops in on this side, couple in the middle, couple on the end, and that's it. The daphnia are going to do the rest. And you probably only have to feed them once every two, three days. You'll be able to identify because as soon as we pour this in, the water is going to get cloudy and you're going to know when to feed them again next when the water becomes clear and not cloudy. So we're just going to remove the lid and we're just going to pour a couple drops. That was actually a lot, but that's fine. So you can see that the water immediately clouds up. That is going to get pushed around a little bit throughout the tank, and it's going to make the entire water column a little cloudy. But that's good because then that means the entire water column has these itty bitty, itty bitty microscopic particles in it that the uh, Daphne are gonna filter out. And that is how they feed. So over the course of the next couple of days, they're gonna feed off of all of that lovely yeast. And then after a few days, when this becomes clear again, all you gotta do is give them a couple more drops and then every couple weeks or whenever you see it start to get a little murky and stuff like that, you'll give it a water change. Super easy, super easy process. It's been about five minutes and you can already tell that the entire water column has been encased in that slurry of yeast and it's just all cloudy. And the Daphnia are loving it. They are running around and munching on every single little particle in that yeast water. So they are happy campers. You can also culture Daphnia outside if you're in a little bit of a warmer climate. So you can have like a small child's pool or a tank or something outside and just constantly run green water. And you can basically just completely forget that you have Daphnia out there and they will reproduce and do whatever they need. Preferably you would keep it, if you're in a very hot climate, you would keep it in a very cool uh, area. Cause again, they don't like hot water. They like cold water. And if you live in a place that gets below freezing, I don't speak from experience here, but I hear that the Daphnia can reproduce after the ice melts and they will come back after a long winter. So I'm kind of excited to try that one for myself being that I live in Alaska, but for now this inside culture will be just fine. 
So if you learned something today or you like what you saw here, let me know in the comment section down below. Give me a like, a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us go a long way and it might help you with something informative that we share later down the road. And if there's something you want to see specifically regarding the fish room, please let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, hope you guys learned something from this video and have a great day. Peace.